Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Shock Radio. We have Mike on the line. We're going to be getting started in like into the show, but before we do, let me give out some websites for you. Today we have Mike on the show, so you want to subscribe to his YouTube channel by going to www.youtube.com forward slash Micah 1116. That's triple one. And Micah is spelled M-I-C-A-H 116. You could also go to our show page and you can see it there. Uh, let me bring in real quick, Micah, and, okay, you're on the air, but uh, let me finish what we were talking about. A uh, little update also on our chat room. You guys could chat with us 24 hours a day at shockonl.net. That's www.shockawenow.net. Um, and another little update on my debate challenge to the thinking atheist right here on Blog Talk Radio. Well, As predicted, uh, he rejected my debate challenge. As you know, the thinking atheist is an evolutionist. He's an atheist that is also here on Blog Talk Radio. Um, Perhaps this might be a case of a a transition. He has transitioned into a chicken. Now, we also, uh, he didn't want to debate me. Uh, Go to my website at www.shockforever.com for more details on how he transitioned to do a chicken. Now, um, you will notice that when you go to our show page at blogtalkradio.com forward slash shock on now, there's a website URL in the show description that says creation.com. And there's like 15 questions there. I encourage our listeners, and I see we already got people going in the chat room, to uh, open up that page on your browser as you listen to this show. And lastly, special thanks to creation.com and the Traditional Values Coalition for joining us in the battle for truth. And they are helping us shine the light on these errors, lies, and even downright frauds of evolution. So let's get started. Um, Micah, let's see uh, how your sound is. I think I brought you on the air. How you doing, man? Oh, good. How you doing? You know, I'm Mike and I, I'm doing good, Micah. We were up real late last night in the chat room. You guys should chat with us uh, uh, at www.shockonnow.net. And I was like, I, I hope Micah had a lot of coffee. <laughs> uh, but, Micah, you know, you and I have met with people in the chat room, and they'll say to you and I, you and I talked about this before, how they believe evolution to be true. 
But when we ask them if they know the difference between micro and macro evolution, right. they say, well, no. So right. maybe we should start on that. Yeah, well, w one thing about that is what you'll commonly hear is that my, my, all macro is is just my, micro over long periods of time that, that one right. leads to the other. But the truth of the matter is that microevolution is just a variation. For example, right. changes changes with uh, size, shape, and color, like cosmetic changes. For example, like if there's if you have 250 varieties of dogs, okay. Um, the interesting, interesting thing is that if uh, woes evolved into domestic dogs, um, they all they all still have the same number of bones, and most people don't even know that. Um, domestic dogs can actually have three less bones than a wolf does. So the only differences you see there are, are cosmetic changes. Okay, but what, but what macroevolution is this. Macroevolution would be where an organism actually evolves a new structure that is new to the species. For example, if uh, lobe fin fish evolved into an amphibian tetrapods and evolved limbs and digits. Now, see, the, see, all we see is microevolution, in which we just see cosmetic changes, like differences in uh, size or color or um, shape. Right. And um, for those of you, uh, thanks for that, Micah. For those of you guys that have the uh, 15 questions for evolutionists, um, you know, Micah, on question two, it says, uh, if I can read it to you and you give us your feelings on it, it says, how did the DNA code originate? Right. Because the code is a sophisticated language system with letters and words where the meaning of the words is unrelated to the chemical properties of the letters. Uh, just as the information on our chat page, for example, uh, in our chat room, or the, is the pixels on the screen, is not properties of that. So it says, what other coding systems has existed without intelligent design um, yeah, let's talk about that one. Question yeah, two this about is DNA. By, this is by far probably one of the best evidence, evidences for creation. Um, and there's many, there's many properties about DNA. Um, first of all, here recently, um, I think uh, as of la this past July, um, they actually discovered that there's actually eight bases to DNA rather than four. So in the past uh, month or so, we've realized it's, it's even more complex than we, 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 uh, we uh, previously even thought. Um, but the interesting thing about DNA, okay, DNA is information, okay, and it, it c contains the gene genetic instructions on how to how to produce the proteins in the cell, and also to make up basically what you look like, all your features, everything. It, it, it makes you a human. It makes a rose a rose, right? Now, er everything in nature has a cause and effect relationship, okay, and if the effect is information, okay, the only the only known cause that we know and effect the only known cause we know of that can give that effect is intelligence. Right. Okay. If you ask anybody that they will know just common sense, the only thing that produces information is intellig intelligence. Now, there's something interesting about this information too, is that this DNA is encoded information. Okay. Now what that means Encoding is a process by which uh, you take pre-existing information and you convert it into a coded format. Okay, so what that means is, is that the information in the DNA molecule existed prior to it being in a, in a coded form. Okay, it, it was non-material, right? And then something encoded this information into a coded form. Now, the only thing we know of in science that can encode information is intelligence. I mean, how how can nature it just matter? Right. It's not intelligent. How can it, how can it possibly take information and convert it into a coded form? Now, there is not one evolutionist on this on this globe who can answer that question. How nature could possibly do that? Uh, yeah, that's just amazing. And you know uh, what we're talking about, guys. Uh, Mike and I are talking about. If you go to our show page, there you'll see creation.com link. It's a PDF. Different questions that evolutionists. Uh, are stumped on now. Um, here's here's one here, question nine, and uh, just to give you an example, you guys know that um, I've challenged the thinking atheist right here on Blog Talk Radio to a debate, and he refused my debate challenge. But I was listening to one of his shows, and he had Aaron Ra on his show, 
And um, Aaron Ross said uh, he was talking about how he met with uh, an old Christian friend, and he was trying to convince his Christian friend that atheism was true and evolution was true. And he says in the, on the show, you can go listen to it, uh, Thinking Atheist Show, um, he says that he goes, you know, I could show my – uh, his uh, Christian friend, that there's hundreds of transitional species, hundreds of transitional species. But if you look at question nine, it says, why are the expected, and I'll let you talk on this, Micah, but it says, why are the expected countless millions of transitional fossils missing? So, uh, Micah, remember you and I were talking about, and if there's hundreds of transitional species, right. um, how many changes have to happen? Right. For this, How many, you know, and we don't see the expected countless millions of transitional fossils. Yeah, uh, million millions is probably an understatement. Okay, right. Because let's let's just take one example here. Okay, now Aaron Ross says that there are hundreds of transitional species. Okay, uh, one example I like to give. Um, let's just pick a random number here. Okay, let's say for a lobe fin fish to evolve into an amphibian tetrapod and, and acquire limbs and digits, let's say this organism needs 50 new bones. Okay. Now, e each time this organism evolves w one of these new bones it needs. Okay. Now, and obviously these changes in the evolutionary model are not going to happen overnight. Okay. Each one of these bones is going to take thousands upon thousands of years to form. Right. So you, so what, we, what you would have is that after each time when this organism evolves one of these new bones, okay, that organism with that new bone is going to reproduce, and they're going to die, and they're going to fossilize. Okay. So. Uh, for each one of these transitions, you might have 100,000 fossils of each one. So this, say this organism needs to evolve 50 new bones, okay? You would actually find a sequence of fossils where you could actually see these uh, these bones individually evolving, okay? And you might have 100,000 of each one of those fossils, right? So even in just this one organism, just this one organism, you would have at least at least 50 transitional fossils. Right. So when he and, says, and, and that, yeah, and that's just in one creature. Just in one, you know. Yeah, right. We don't see the intermediates, you know. Like um, he says, there's hundreds of of them. We should have, <laughs> you know, like he said, that's a conservative oh, number, uh, really, if I mean, not I mean, billions. You know, here's the funny thing about that. One point about this is that in the in the, in the evolution of an organism, right, like lobefin fish, there is like there is only one stage in that entire organism's evolution where the, it, the, its, structures are, its structures are complete, right? So it's, evol so it's evolving limbs and digits, okay? There's only one stage in the entire process where those structures are complete. The, the other 99% of the steps, it's still evolving that structure, right? So just basic, basic probability, I mean, the, the number of um, the number of transitional, the number of transitional forms should be 100 to 1, because there's only one stage where the fossils are complete. Right. But yet what they do is they show us that one fossil, and they're always complete, by the way. They're not – you don't see an organism. <laughs> yeah. well, you don't I see an organism. You know, like, for example, like if low fin fish needs 50 bones to acquire limbs and digits, you, you never find these organisms with, with 10 arm bones or 12. They're always fully formed. Right, and then they'll put them on, uh, next to each other, like on a picture. Remember how you were talking about A to Z? Like, for example, uh, they don't show the, the in-between intermediates from A to Z. They'll right. show something on A and something on Z. They'll put them side to side on a little cartoon drawing and say, look, at uh, this changed into this. Now, this is kind of funny. On uh, question 14, it says um, uh, they asked Richard Dawkins, if evolution has been observed, and maybe you can talk about this too, he said, and here, this is why you don't want to let uh, Richard Dawkins out of the lab too often. Here's what he said. Evolution has been observed. <laughs> Let's see if I can say this with a straight face. He says, evolution has been observed. It's just that it hasn't been observed while it's happening. <laughs> it's just it's right. So, so in other words, so in other words, it happened long ago and far away. Is what he's saying, and there was no one there to see it. But now, now, Micah, really, when you when you look at it, it's not real. It's not science. How could you? Right. It fails the scientific method. 